If you find yourself suddenly dealing with joint pain that seems to just come out of nowhere, especially in your knees, your hips, your hands, or maybe even your lower back, and you're living somewhere in the space of menopause, you are not alone. A lot of us women start experiencing these aches and pains through perimenopause, the menopause years, without a good bodily explanation. Like there's no real thing you can say that this is why my joints hurt. Feeling this out of the blue achiness can be really surprising. And what I usually hear from my clients is that they're suddenly old. They chalk these aches and pains up to the aging process. But if you're a woman who's noticed a more rapid onset in the absence of any sort of injury, it could be your hormones talking to you. Now I've worked with countless women who around menopause just think that these newfound aches that they've never experienced before, at least on this level, were taking up permanent residency in their bodies. They thought this was just the way it's going to be. First of all, achy painful joints are not in your head. They're real regardless of the cause. So before I go on to explain the connection between achy joints and menopause that some 60% of us women experience, follow up with a medical practitioner to make sure that you're crossing your T's and dotting your I's to make sure that the pain that you're feeling isn't in fact something else. In case we haven't met, my name is Tracy D. Mitchell. I'm a board certified Mayo Clinic health and wellness coach and author of the book, The Belly Burn Plan. I hold a master's degree in health and nutrition education. And for the last 20 years, I've been helping women like you live their healthiest life. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get regular video updates, each created with your health in mind. So in my experience, a majority of my clients who are menopausal and have joint achiness or pain of some sort before we start working together have less or none within a couple of months of teaming up. Now I'll explain what they do in just a moment. Here's the thing. It's not just getting older or wear and tear. Hormonal shifts play a huge role in how your joints feel as you approach and go through menopause. So in this video, I'm gonna briefly explain why menopause and joint pain often go hand in hand, what's really happening in your body, and most importantly, what you can do right now to start feeling better. So let's get into it. As your body goes through menopause, your estrogen levels begin to take a dip, and that, as simple as it sounds, is the main reason that you're experiencing these types of aches and pains. But if you understand why the lack of estrogen makes your body feel like this, you can do something about it. So two big things to know. Number one, estrogen is a natural anti-inflammatory hormone. With less estrogen, it makes it easier for things to get inflamed in your body. Now I could talk about how inflammation can show up in your body for hours, but just know that joint pain through menopause is related to less estrogen. Estrogen also helps to boost synovial fluid in your body. Synovial fluid is a fluid that has a consistency of sort of an egg white and is found in between your joints. It helps buffer your joints and helps to keep the joints lubricated and moving easier. Think of it like this. Synovial fluid works on your joints the same way grease does to a machine. So again, with less estrogen in your body, the synovial fluid takes a hit. A quick side note about synovial fluid is that it's mostly made up of something called hyaluronic acid. And this hyaluronic acid is found not just in your joints, but your skin too. And it helps to keep a nice moisture balance, which is part of the reason why as we go through menopause, skin can become drier. So those are two big ways that less estrogen through menopause affects your joints. You're prone to more inflammation, which naturally can affect your joints, and you potentially have less lubrication through your joints because you're producing less synovial fluid, it just diminishes. Now that you know that, what can you do about all of this? First and foremost, take a look at what you are eating. If the foods you're eating are inflammatory, then your body is going to be more inflamed. It's that simple. Now, when I start working with my clients, very few people actually think that they're eating inflammatory. But after doing a little digging, most women are eating more hidden inflammatory foods than they realize. I'll link to a video that dives into anti-inflammatory eating in the description below. But for now, the easiest path to eating more anti-inflammatory foods is to eat more vegetables, more fruits, and more foods that contain omega-3 fatty acids. It's really not much more complex than that. So let's start with vegetables. How many servings of veggies do you really think that you're getting in your diet each day? And I'm thinking beyond potatoes and corn. I'm thinking leafy greens, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, tomatoes, cucumbers, foods of that nature. Let's jump to fruits. How many servings of fruit are you getting in your diet each day? After that, 
Are you getting any legumes in your diet? Things like beans and lentils. These foods are a hotbed of beneficial fiber and anti-inflammatory polyphenols or plant nutrients that have a significant effect on your body's ability to fight inflammation. If you're struggling to come up with the smallest of foods that fit one of these bills, it's perfectly fine to wash, rinse, repeat, and eat the same foods from these groups that you like or are easy for you to find. Eat them and eat them often. And please do not worry about counting macros when it comes to these types of foods. I also mentioned foods that contain omega-3 fatty acids, which are very anti-inflammatory. Fatty fish like salmon, ground flaxseed, flaxseed oil, chia seeds, walnuts, these are all examples of foods that contain omega-3 fatty acids. Eat more of these foods too. And if these foods are not as accessible to you for any reason, you can supplement with an omega-3 fatty acid instead. The most important thing that you can do on the diet side is to stay consistent. One day of eating healthy does not do a lot, but if you stay consistent for a couple of weeks, you'll really start noticing a difference. Another way you can help keep your joints pain-free is to simply move them. Now this might not be the most desirable thing you wanna do, especially if you're feeling pain, but you can boost synovial fluid production by increasing the range of motion in your joints with exercise. Strength training in particular helps your joints in three ways. Number one, you increase or maintain synovial fluid production. Number two, you improve your bone density. All weight-bearing exercises do this. Number three, you actually strengthen the joint. Now, cardio exercise is just as important. Obviously, there are some strong cardiac reasons that you wanna get your heart pumping, but you can also move nutrient-rich blood around too, helping to literally nourish your joint. So a quick recap. Number one, menopause joint pain does not mean that you're old or some sort of a relic that's collecting dust in a museum. It means that you have less estrogen and that's impacting you. Number two, you can improve inflammation significantly by eating more anti-inflammatory. And this means loading up on veggies and fruits. Stick with what you like and eat foods that are easy for you to find. Do not worry about counting macros when it comes to these types of foods. And then incorporate more foods that contain omega-3 fatty acids. Number three, move your body. If you don't move it, you will lose it. And what I'm talking about is range of motion, strength, balance. You wanna hold on to all of that. Get up, get moving, exercise, get your heart pumping. You'll also improve your mental health as well. So feel good physically, feel good mentally, you deserve this. So that's what I've got for you now. What questions do you have for me? Anything on this topic? I'd be happy to try to answer it for you. And if there's a different topic that you'd like to see a video about, go ahead and leave the suggestion in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay in the know on all things healthy on your journey through menopause and beyond. Thanks for showing up.